Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history of Asturias in Spain. Asturias, as you can see, is located in northern Spain, about as far north as you can go. It has a coastline here along the Bay of Biscay. And turns out that that's actually not the most important geographic feature of Astorius. Astorius is a part of the country known as Green Spain. In that, a stretch of land going up here along the coast is very lush and green and beautiful and full of some incredible wildlife and scenery. In particular, in Asturias, we have the Cantabrian Mountains. You can see it says Cordillera Cantabria. And in particular, there's an interesting little section of this mountain range right here. You can see it's green. These are the Picos de Europa. You can see there, Picos de Europa. Of course, the Europa Peaks in English. A very, very beautiful little section of this mountain range. There are some fairly large cities in Asturias. Not nearly as big as some of Spain's major cities. You know, it's no Barcelona, it's no Madrid. But we have the capital here of Oviedo. We also have the port city here of Gijón. There's Aviles also. We'll take a look at these places on Google Earth later in the video. There's one other little interesting geographic part of Astorias, and it's down about here. And it's in this area where there are very large mining basins of coal. And these are the, the, the big coal industry section of Asturias. Despite it having all of this beautiful nature and scenery and coastline, it's actually a fairly industrial little corner of Spain. So along here we have the Nalon Valley. You can see the river cutting through here. And there's also the Codal Valley in this area as well. And it's a very tiny little principality here compared to others in Spain. It's quite small. Before I get into history, I want to quickly thank a viewer named Felix who messaged me on Instagram because they live in Asturias and wanted to help with my research and they sent me a bucket load of information about history and geography. So thank you very much to Felix. And if anyone else out there lives in an area that you know is coming up, Feel free to message me on my Instagram. It's just ASMR Geographica, or you can email me, however you want to reach out, and uh, offer up your services. I'll gladly take you up on that. Any Kiwis, any Aussies out there, you know you're coming up in a minute. <laughs> so, thank you again to Felix. But let's jump into the history section because. Astorius has one very unique thing about Spanish history. Also, apologies if you can hear my tummy rumbling. <laughs> of course, it was not rumbling at all until I hit record, because that's how it always goes. Our history is actually going to start way, way early in the history of humans, even before the history of humans, because we have evidence of Homo erectus and Neanderthals living in this area. But our very, very ancient ancestors loved their kids.
cave paintings, especially in this corner of Spain and France. There are some amazing ones in Asturias. Now, most of them are uh, not in this region. They're mostly in Cantabria and other parts of northern Spain, but there are some here. And we, we will take a look at them. Sorry, my, my tablet likes to turn itself off. It's very annoying. There it goes again. Come back. going to have to hold it. Okay. The cave of Altamir, which is in the neighboring region, so we're not going to talk about Altamir, but we are going to talk about the Paleolithic cave art of northern Spain. It says, 17 decorated caves of the Paleolithic age were inscribed as an extension to the Altamir cave inscribed in 1985. The property will now appear on the list as Cave of Altamira and Paleolithic Cave Art of Northern Spain. The property represents the apogee of Paleolithic Cave Art that developed across Europe, from the Urals to the Iberian Peninsula, from 35,000 to 11,000 BCE. Because of their deep galleries, isolated from external climatic influences, these caves are particularly well preserved. The caves are inscribed as masterpieces of creative genius and as the humanity's earliest accomplished art. They are also inscribed as exceptional testimonies to a cultural tradition and as outstanding illustrations of a significant stage in human history. I won't show you any of the photos because they're of Altamira. And there's not that many anyway, so don't worry, you're not missing out on too much there. But that is where the very, very early history begins here. It really gets going with the arrival of the Celts. And in this region lived a Celtic tribe known as the Astoris, which is of course where the name comes from. The ancient peoples here also built lots of interesting uh, megaliths, which are like stone monuments, stone important areas, typically holy areas, I presume, and things like that. The Romans, however, came a conquering, in particular, Augustus. Uh, fought for this region between the years 29 and 19 BCE, finally taking over. They would rule for quite some time until the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. In the 6th century, the Visigoths came in to the region, bringing their culture and more important, bringing their religion, which became Christianity. And this becomes very important by the year 718. Because further south, a few years earlier, in the year 711, a Muslim army invaded southern Spain from northern Africa, which historically they're now known as the Moors. And they slowly came up the Iberian Peninsula, conquering as they went. And they reached a cave here in the mountains by 718, and they were fought back by King Pelayo. And it was the first victory against the invading Muslims. And it was a big, important victory. Um, Pelayo became the new king their Christian outpost kingdom, since pretty much the entire Iberian Peninsula was conquered by the Moors, except this region here. They held on to their Catholic faith. And it was here that the Reconquista began, the world's longest war, in which the Christians slowly, 
slowly but surely reconquered the peninsula from the Muslims. The capital was located right here, um, known as Kovadinga, I believe. Um, but it eventually moved to Oviedo in the 9th century. As the kingdom expanded, reconquering their lands, the centers of power moved, and eventually the uh, kingdom of Leon, which had you know, expanded out into, became far more powerful than anything happening here, and the capital was moved there. In 1388, an interesting agreement was made that any heir to the throne of Spain would be the prince or princess of Asturias. And that continues today. King Felipe's daughter, Princess Leonor, is the princess of Asturias today. Of course, spoiler alert, by 1492, the entire Muslim population was pushed out of Spain. At least the ruling forces, right? That they would push out the rest of the Muslims in the upcoming years of the Spanish Inquisition. This region was, from what I can tell in research, just kind of not nearly as important as other areas. Um, it did become a center of learning and importance during the Spanish Enlightenment of the 18th century. But it soon became known as a place of rebellion uh, during the Napoleonic Age, when Napoleon took over Spain. The region rebelled against that. The region was very active during the Carlist Wars, a series of Spanish civil wars. And then hold on to that thought, because we're going to come back to that in about a hundred years. But first, it was in the 1830s that the coal mining industry began. And soon, industry of all kinds started to blossom in the area, like steel and um, lots of railroad development as well. This led to a lot of push for workers' rights. There were many different protests, union organizations in the area, the largest definitely being the big uh, protest from 1934 to 1936, where the workers were protesting against what I could tell, like changes in the government that would have affected them. But bigger things were on the horizon being named Franco and the Spanish Civil War would break out right after that. And the area would fight back against Francisco Franco. In particular, one large battle in 1937 was the Battle of El Mazuku. Not very good with Castilian Spanish. But uh, Franco would take over all of Spain, run his fascist dictatorship until his death. But during that time, industry greatly uh, boomed in the area of Asturias. Uh, my friend Felix said it's, it was done on purpose to keep the workers busy so they would. From what I've seen from, from Felix and other sources is that one of the main issues in Astorias today is the aging population. During the Franco years, many people left, understandably. But many people have been leaving the region for other countries or other areas of Spain, uh, leaving behind the older generations. Uh, the, the population is getting up there in years, and 
there aren't that many young people there to replace them and that's becoming an issue but we will really have to see where that goes in the future won't we so in a big old nutshell because there is a lot of history here this was a, a massive summary uh, that is the history of Asturias so why don't I grab my tablet and we're gonna take a look around this little principality okay hold on I forgot before we head to Google Earth, I forgot to show you the other UNESCO site. That's very important. The Monuments of Oviedo and the Kingdom of the Asturias. I meant to pull this up when I said the capital moved to Oviedo. And I completely forgot. <laughs> but let's read this. In the 9th century, the flame of Christianity was kept alive in the Iberian Peninsula in the tiny kingdom of the Asturias. Here, an innovative pre-Romanesque architectural style was created that was to play a significant role in the development of the religious architecture of the peninsula. Its highest achievements can be seen in the churches and and let's hope I pronounce these right. Forgive me if I don't. Santa Maria de Narrago, San Miguel de Lino, Santa Cristina de Lena, the Camara Santa, and San Julian de los Prados, in and around the ancient capital city of Oviedo. Associated with them is the remarkable contemporary hydraulic engineering structure known as La Foncalada. And here you can see some cool pictures, which is great because not a lot of these pictures are on Google Earth. So that kind of works. Very old 9th century church here. Some older churches here as well. And lots of very beautiful stone structures. You can watch the architecture change, right? You can tell that this is a little newer, and then this is even more newer, and we just travel through history and watch the buildings change over time. It's pretty neat. Okay, now let's head over to Google Earth. <laughs> so let me highlight Oviedo first. Hello. Thank you. So I can zoom out to show you exactly where we are in the world. So here is Spain, there's Portugal right there, here's the rest of Europe, United Kingdom's up there, Africa's down here, and we are up along this coastline here, in the very north of Spain. Let's check out, we need to actually let's look at this slideshow, it's pretty good, shows you some more of the really cool architecture here in the city. None of those really, really old buildings we saw on UNESCO, but it's some very cool buildings as well. I like this little mishmash here. It's almost Italian, right? Kind of has that feel to it. I wonder if these were built more in that enlightenment area or on time of the 17th century, right? Beautiful fountain. See, this almost looks French, right? Interesting mix here. Buildings, this looks like Rome. Almost. And lots of cool modern art around the city as well. And some traditional art as well. That's for Christmas time, of course. Let's see. I'm trying to remember what I wanted to show you guys in the city here. I think there is a museum I wanted to show you here. Here we go. Museo Archaeological. Well, it's gone now, but <laughs> it's in Spanish. Archaeological Museum, which, like, this building's really neat, too. Even, like, the, like the road here looks neat. I'm going to put my pencil down. I don't need it anymore. But let's take a look at some archaeology here in this 
exclusive in a beautiful courtyard. We have an old, probably from an old church, right? It's pretty very gothic. Uh, what our ancestors most likely looked like that used to live here. Some more incredible stonework. Look at this detail. Wow. Some cool engraved work there. Maybe it's Roman times. Some amazing columns. Lots of, looks like prehistoric things. Maybe little tools. This is interesting too, isn't it? The big ol' heads. Almost like anime or something. This is pretty. This looks like Mary and Jesus, doesn't it? I bet it is. Beautiful Roman. Um, why did I just blink on what this is called? When they lay down the tiles, it's going to come to me in a second. Uh, it starts with a P, right? Oh my gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, so this is cool too. I like this. It's like carved with something. I'm not quite sure. But it looks kind of like an I was here kind of moment. I doubt it. Um, what's that called? That's driving me crazy. I'll remember in a second. But anyway. Let's see. One of those churches that they mentioned, I see somewhere. Where'd it go? Oh, this is one of them I mentioned. Oh, this is some of the old churches, right? Oh, how pretty. The painted walls there. Very old building. Wow. Gorgeous grounds as well. Oh, I think that's why I didn't make a note to show this to you, because there's not a lot of pictures of the actual church. Um, but there's actually... Lots of really cool little sights to see around here. There's a really neat statue of Jesus up here. Um, kind of given the Christ the Redeemer vibes, you know. And lots of neat statues around in various parks and stuff. Always highly encourage you to check out Google Earth for yourself. Up here is Jihon. And here in Jihon, there's also lots of neat things here. But I found this museum I think this is the one I think no this isn't it but it's cool look at this, looks like some old ruins this is not the slideshow I wanted to show you look at the big port that wasn't it I think it's over here um could have sworn. There's beautiful beach as well. Um, I thought there's one over here. I was going to show you. Here it is. Um, some Roman ruins that they have preserved. Look at that. This used to be somebody's house. There's a pretty church nearby. Beautiful beach, of course. But yeah, this used to be a little Roman community here. There's Augustus and so on. Augustus Caesar. Now there's just something very haunting about seeing like old city planning and knowing that this used to be somebody's everyday ho hum drum boring life and now it's preserved as a museum for Amazed over. I think that's what I was going to say. Um, let's head over to the mountains. We're going to look at the Picos de Europa. And if this is the right slideshow, I think it is. This is a great slideshow. Probably the best slideshow in a long time. First of all, this image, this lake here among the mountains, is what comes up the most when I search this place, and of course because it's so gorgeous, right? Isn't that beautiful? Look at these mountains. Those amazing 
and pearls. It's so cool. Some sweet carols. Here is a very important, beautiful church nearby. But this is where it's very important because this is the cave where they fought off the Muslims. And I think I read that uh, the Virgin Mary appeared here as well. So they built a chapel. Okay, sorry, my phone overheated. <laughs> but um, I was saying that I believe this is the cave where the Virgin Mary appeared. And uh, that was taken as a sign to reconquer Spain from the Muslims, and they did. Also, um, King Palayo is buried in this cave as well. Uh, but yeah, there's the, the chapel there. The stream, just south of it. More beautiful landscape with sweet cows grazing. And there he is, King Palayo. another cave. I have found so many caves in Asturias. And most of them are very scary. Um, not, not the one you see here. That one's quite beautiful, but um, just random. I'll be like, what's that? And what's happened? And it's a very ominous, scary cave. <laughs> so feel free to explore that on your own. I don't like looking at caves. Um, over here is where that big beautiful church that we saw is located up there very big important church in Astorias because it was one of the main churches during the Reconquista did I mention that like many people moved to Astorias from other regions like they had to flee the Muslims and they came here so it just became I think I mentioned that it became like a big congregation point for these Spanish Catholics to maintain their faith. Beautiful little town also. But this was the capital, Cangaste Onig. Um, but there's actually not a lot of really good slideshows in this town, considering it was once the ancient capital of Astoria. Let's check out something a little more modern. Over here is Avinius, another big port area you can see here. But this city is mainly known for this cultural center, the Centro Niemeyer. And if that name is familiar, it's because it was designed by Oscar Niemeyer, one of the most incredible architects of the modern age. As you can see here, isn't that gorgeous? And uh, it's just a big, uh, like, cultural center. Like, there's a theater inside and lots of beautiful modern art. It's gorgeous. It's almost like it came from outer space, right? But that's Nehemiah. He really likes those kind of alien futuristic shapes, right? also have, oh, we need to look at the cave art. So let's see if I can find it before my phone overheats again. I need to find Oviedo, and then I have to look this area over here and hope that I find it. Um, let's see, let's see. Otherwise, I'd probably have to type it in. I should probably just do that. So you can see lots of little caves popping up, and they scare me. Because here, why don't I just... Let's see, I think this is a cave. Maybe not. Maybe that's just a mirador. An outpost. An uh, overlook, right? Um, this might be... Nope, that's so weird. Um, oh, that's beautiful. Hold on really pretty. Of course, I'm saying there's all these scary caves and not one is going to pop up. There's Los Lobos. The wolves. There's wolves here. Very pretty. Let's see if um, it won't pop up. Where's 
I think it's further south. Ha 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 ha. I didn't have to type it in at all. Prehistoric Park of Tverg. And here we have, there's like only two pictures, so I gotta find it. And some cave art. Here we go. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, I'm pretty sure because every cave art museum that I know of does this where you can't actually go into the caves. Look, there's the, the buffalo that they're painting. You can't actually go into the caves because all the oxygen. There's another one, the big Ferdinand. Um, and just human damage in general will ruin it. So they recreate them exactly so that you can, you know, imagine what it would be like to be in the actual caves. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Because that's, that's what, like, every cave art museum is like. Um, and let me see. Okay, one other place I want to show you before we close out. So there's lots of things to see. We need to... Get my bearings. There's the one. Okay. Head down to the valleys here to check out some of the industry I told you about. There's some cool museums over here. This is the Mining and Industry Museum. I see lots of train stuff. And uh, lots of things that I'm not quite sure what they are. I, I, it's kind of locked off, but I still can't tell if it's a very kind of steampunk kind of museum, isn't it? Train stuff, lots of gears, lots of, lots of all kinds of things. Wish I knew what all these did. Um, that's a dentist office. You can see odontology. That's that's very recognizable as a dentist chair, isn't it? What else do we have? Like. Someone tell me what this is. Maybe it's some kind of big press? I'm not sure. This is a big thing too. What does this do? Maybe control steam or something? That's definitely an operating table. You can see the op op operacion. The doctor's office. And some more big, big guys there. There's also this museum here, which is specifically about mining. You can see these big towers and the little mine cart here. These big sluices, I guess. I'm not sure they use that for coal, but more equipment. And I have no idea what they do, but clearly they're important for coal mining. There's, that's deep underground, I'm sure. And there goes the mining carts. It's a little terrifying. Caves, uh, I think, are really cool, but I'd rather not be in one. I love this planet. I love Mother Earth. I do not want to be inside of her. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, I don't know. I just, it's very claustrophobic. I'm not a claustrophobic person, but somehow thinking that I'm inside the Earth Anyway, I am going to close this out with this slideshow because I love this slideshow and I think it's gorgeous. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this style of content, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. And you're not going to want to miss the next one because we're heading to Egypt. And we are going to see one of the most famous sites, just kidding, the most famous sites in all of Egypt. Probably the most famous temple. Like, picture Egyptian temple in your mind, the big statues outside. That's where we're going. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video be relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, good